So today we're going to demonstrate building with D logs. So this is a D profile. So you can see it's milled on three sides. The exterior surface of the cabin log is going to be just the natural peeled bark look. So this was milled six inches high and the width varies from about three and a half to up to maybe five inches on some of these logs. So one of the more popular orders I get is people want to build with zero gap. So when they stack up their logs, they really want zero gap between each log. And although I normally recommend having at least a quarter inch to a half inch gap, um, it is possible to build with no gap and a lot of people do it that way. In order to build with no gap, it really takes a lot more precision. Um, having no gap is a lot less forgiving. By having that little bit of a gap in there, you're going to keep your log notches a much tighter because you're going to have a lot more weight of the cabin bearing down on the notches. And that's going to keep those notches tighter. And it'll also give you a little space to do a small chinking gap. And I do recommend it that way. But like I say, a lot of people want no gap. So we're going to do that today. And I'm going to show you some of the extra steps that you're going to need to take to get good results in order to build with no gap. So as I said, no gap, it's um, less forgiving. So everything needs to be built more precisely. So also with your logs, they need to be very consistent for the log height it needs to be milled really all exactly the same height. And the log needs to be stable. So ideally the log would be kiln dried. Uh, very stable, so over time it's not going to shrink or swell or twist and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so another aspect of this that needs to be precise. The jig itself needs to be very accurately made. So I have another video on building the jigs, but we're going to go over a couple of points here. Once the jig is all finished, you're going to want to double check and make sure that the jig is precisely made. So it'd be good to check this angle and verify that's accurate. We're also going to check this bevel slope. So this is our 11 degree template board that's detailed on the first page of the dovetail jig plans. So we're going to use that and verify that this is built to the right slope. So it should be contacting at both points there and there. So this is a 90 degree angle on this face. So this sloping cut also should be contacting top and bottom at 90 degrees. So the more accurately you build your jig, the more stable and consistent your logs are and the more precisely you work you can get good results doing a, a zero gap cabin but you're gonna have to be a lot more careful so the last thing to make it work for a no gap cabin is we're gonna have to fine tune this offset distance between the surface of the saw guide and your cutting edge so if you've seen the previous video, you know that there are washers between the plywood and the saw bar. So what we're going to do is start out with a stack of three washers high at each location for each bolt on each side of the bar. So for this bolt, I'll have three washers stacked there underneath. Likewise on this side at every location. So I've basically got a three washer thick offset. And we're going to do a trial cut of three logs, test fit those together, and see what adjustment we might need to make to that offset in order to increase or decrease our log gap. So we're trying to basically home in on that zero gap. So that's what we'll do now. I've got this set up with a three washer spacing, and we'll go ahead and cut our three test logs and uh, see how the fit is.
Again, what we're doing now is doing some test fits with three logs to see if we have zero gap between the logs, which is what this particular design was intended for. So, I set the first log right on the subfloor. This notch was really not necessary, but cut it anyway. On this end, I shimmed it up so that it's perfectly level with the floor. Now we're going to set the third log and see if we have zero gap or not. Okay, so you can see that we do have about three eighths of an inch, and if you know if I'm building a dovetail. D log cabin with no gap. I'd actually probably shoot for this three eighths of an inch instead of a zero gap. Use some shims in here where necessary and do a little bit of chinking here. So, what we're going to have to do to reduce that gap is eliminate some of the space between our saw guide and the bar. So, if we have three eighths of an inch. We want to remove one quarter of that dimension. So that would be about three thirty seconds of an inch. Hopefully that's pretty close to one washer. But for every adjustment you make on that offset, multiply that by four. And that is the change in gap. So if I were to adjust my spacer by a quarter inch on that saw bar, Multiply that by four equals one inch. That would be the change in gap. So here we just want to make relatively minor adjustments. So hopefully one washer is going to do it. Okay, so that seemed to do the trick. It looks like we have now zero gap. So it wasn't too bad. A little bit of trial and error. So had that not been just right, I would have had to make another adjustment and cut three logs again. So I'll take a minute to talk about this gap right here, the so-called half log. So normally what I would do is, this is not a real subfloor, this is just a mock-up for today's demonstration, but normally what I would do on a subfloor is not put the lower notch on the very first logs. So this wall and the far wall would not have this notch. So that would be sitting flat on the floor here. And then I would measure and rip a log to fit in here after I have this much stacked up so I can get an accurate measurement and cut that to fit so that would not be notched it would just go in between the two end logs <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and stack up the rest of these we'll get a better idea what the corner would look like so once again the logs are not all milled identically the same height then you're going to have some variability on your gap also recommend that they be kiln dried so 
Okay, so there you have a demonstration of a cabin with logs and no gap. And again, I really do recommend a gap. It's going to be a lot easier to work with, a lot more forgiving. So even a half inch, three quarter inch gap is recommended. But a lot of people do go for the zero gap. And it, there is a nice look to it, but you have to be a little bit more precise with your work. As far as the notches, I kind of just let these log ends run long. So you could run those long and then just cut them all flush afterwards to whatever overhang you want. So one thing I'll, I'll go ahead and turn this around in a second and show you the interior with the sun hitting it so you can see it. But I like to bevel the inside edges of the corners of these logs and it makes for a nicer look on the interior of the cabin. Okay, I'll turn the logs around just so you can see the interior. So a pretty nice inside corner. One thing I like to do is bevel the corners of every log on the inside. And you get a lot nicer look right here at this joint. Some of these are just kind of bad logs, but you can see there. And that would also allow you to do a very small chinking right here, basically sealant if you wanted to seal the interior uh, with some caulking or log cabin chinking material. So that's all I got for you today.